I'm Deborah, and we're cooking at the Clean Heat Kitchen. We're going to be cooking up a storm, and even what you're going to be cooking. I'm going to be making chicken and beef satay with peanut sauce. And I'm going to be doing a Thai red duck curry. And stay tuned because we're going to be streaming live at 2.30. So see you then. Thank you all for coming to the WA Kitchen. Um, this is Eva and I'm Deborah, and we're obviously ex-contestants from My Kitchen Rules. So, thank you. Oh, hey! <laughs> you know what? Come up here, never Kel. Come up here. Come up. It's a little bit impromptu. We didn't plan this. Come up. Now, do you remember these lovely human beings, the Ducks Nuts? Yes? Yeah? And they did amazing and uh, made us really proud of WA as well. You know, I have, we've never actually met each other before. <laughs> but like, we had to catch up after. Have you met them? Because I haven't. <laughs> yes. And maybe you can come and help us up after. All right? No, really good to see you guys. Thank you for making WA proud. Woohoo! All right. So, what was I going to say? So, today, Eva and I are obviously going to be <laughs> cooking our favourites. Um, Eva's going to be endeavouring into our beautiful satay um, and peanut sauce. So, we're going to do two versions. We're going to do also a chicken and a beef as well. And then I'm going to take you back to Thailand and we're going to do a Thai um, duck curry as well with lye cheese. Okay? So, Eva, what's the first thing we're going to do? Before we do that, I just want to say that we're also on Facebook as well, filming live. So, if everyone wants to turn around, to the two cameras and say hello to all the viewers at home. Woohoo! Um, stay tuned and if you've got questions as well along the way, feel free to um, ask us and we'll be answering them later on. So, um, I'm the starting first, first yeah. right? Okay, so, Deb, um, with the peanut sauce, we're going to make the peanut sauce first. The peanut sauce is sort of like the main uh, component of satay. If your peanut sauce isn't good, then your satay is considered pretty crap. So you want to make sure you get this right. Uh, and it's actually a lot of ingredients that we're going on, uh, that we're having to cook with today. So we're going to start with our processing, um, putting some oil in, in there. And um, so we've got some rice bran oil. We've got a lot of shallots because shallots are re makes any dish tastes a lot better. And we're not using brown onions. We're using shallots because they're smaller, they taste a lot more stronger, um, so we're using a lot of it. So I think it's almost like 15 shallots we've got yep. there. We've also got some lemongrass. A lot of lemongrass. A lot of lemongrass. The white bits only is what we want to use. Some uh, garlic and some galangal. Do you guys know what galangal is? Yes. So galangal is quite similar to ginger, but it's a little bit more in the pinky orange tone and just gives a little bit of a difference of our ginger. And then we're also going to be putting some brown sugar. 
And then we're also going to be putting um, peanuts for our peanut sauce. No, we're also going to be putting oh, some no, dried chilies. Oh, that's halfway through. That's right. Sorry. Oh, yeah. That's just that it. And then, and then we're going to blitz it all up. Okay. Might put some more oil in there, actually. Um, so we're going to blitz it up into a fine paste. So we're just going to do that. And what I've done also here, I've already preheated some oil as well. So it's ready. The blender seems like it's taking a little bit of a jiggle right there. <laughs> it's dropping all my stuff. Okay. You, kill, you go. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the duck curry. And this duck curry, what I'm showing you today, only takes about 30 to 40 minutes of what you need to do. Traditionally, if you wanted to and you're game for it, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours because what you're using is the whole duck and you're going to braise it. Shit. But today we're going to do a nice version is where we're going to be using the duck breast. Okay, who's cooked with duck before? Yeah? Are you successful with it? Not so much, yeah? Someone's nodding. All right, so with the duck, it's actually a beautiful meat. Like, I love eating duck all the time. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to pat the skin dry. Okay, and then we're just going to score it. I'm just going to grab a knife. We're just going to score the skin. And then we're just going to add some sugar on top. Okay, not sugar, salt on top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like in pro mode. So what do you need to do next? The trick is to making a really good duck is actually you start on a nice cold pan. You don't start on a hot pan. You don't put any oil or anything. So you want to start on a nice cold pan, put the skin down, okay? And then you're going to actually let it sit and render for about 10 to 15 minutes. And the good thing about doing your duck is when the oil kind of seeps out, eventually you'll see, because as you can see, it's quite nice and fatty. It will render in size, and that's when you know when it's ready, and then you'll turn it around. But the thing with the duck fat is, Afterwards, you can actually use that fat and put it aside, like say you're having a Sunday roast or anything, and use it as duck fat potato. So you don't want to waste all that. And every, some people are nodding and going, yes, that's what I'm talking about, duck fat potatoes. Okay? All right. Eva, how are you going? Yep, good. So while my oil is getting uh, really hot, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to put it into the pot? Yep. Jeez, this is a bit of a mess, isn't it? It's very, it's very remnant of like MKR days. <laughs> Get flustered. Dev's trying to calm me down. <laughs> Stuff's going everywhere. Um, so, what I'm going to do is, um, we're just going to have to fry off the um, peanut sauce quite well. And a lot of chunks in there but really it should actually be quite fine and it's going to take a while um, to actually um, fry off and what you want to do is have a lot of oil um, in there because the oil is going to emulsify uh, with the spice paste and that's what you want you want it to bind in really 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 well and eventually halfway through we're then going to add some peanut sauce some tamarind and and then boil it and then add some about a liter of water and actually reduce it and boil it down a lot more so it's quite a long process but it's a process that you need to be quite patient uh, in doing so okay. yeah cool all right what i'm going to do is now we're going to make the spice paste for the duck curry okay so you might seem a little bit overwhelmed but there's a little bit of ingredients done so what i've actually done prior to this is i've actually dry roasted um some cumin some white peppercorn, some chili, and coriander. And what we've done is just dry roasting it. So does anyone know what dry roasting spices do? Anyone? Yeah? Yeah, definitely. It makes more flavor, and it kind of releases all those flavors out, so it just makes the actual curry a little bit more intense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of cumin, some white peppercorns. 
Now, all these recipes are actually on the Clean Heat website and also on the Eva and Deborah website. So don't feel that you need to keep writing all the ingredients and going, what do we need to do? It's all right, just write your little nice and tips at home or if you have the notepad and then just follow through with what the instructions we need to do. So I put some chili and also some coriander. And what we're also going to do is we're also going to add some ginger. I'm just going to cut this a little bit down. And also we're going to add some shallots. As you can see, they're quite similar ingredients to what Eva's using in the peanut sauce because a lot of these are just staples of a really good curry base. Okay? And then we're going to have some lemongrass. And then we're also going to add some garlic. And then dried chilies. Who's familiar with dried chilies? Yeah, so dried chilies, you can actually get them from the Asian store. What I've done is I've actually put some hot water and I have dehydrated these chilies. Okay, so I'm just going to put some in here. And I'm also going to just add a little bit of water in here just to make a nice smooth paste. Okay, so I'm just going to put the lid on. And I'm just going to blitz it over. So you, if you can see here, can you see it's coming to a nice smooth paste? Yeah? Okay. You okay, Eva? All good. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is now we're going to add some also oil into our pan. And we're going to fry this really, really, really well as well. Now, can you see with the duck fat right there, can you see all the oil that's coming out? Yeah, that was from, started from with no oil at all. And we're gonna fry that really, really well as well. All right, so Eva, what are you doing now? So what happened was, it, my blender didn't blitz properly, uh, and I hate that it's in chunks. It shouldn't be like that. So I'm trying to blend it all over again. And I've got a new blender, so we're on track. We're ready to go. Okay. So we're just going to fry this really well till it kind of changes in nice and color. Okay. So what we're going to do next, let's just kind of pretend because normally when you do a remper, the remper of the curry is like the heart of the curry. And what we need to do is fry it really, really well and with some oil. And what normally happens is it changes in colour. And what we're going to do next is actually add some coconut milk. Okay. And then we're also going to add some coconut cream as well. So the cream is a little bit thicker than the coconut milk. So we're going to add all that together and we're going to stir that. Now in a curry, you obviously got a little bit of um, a sweetness and a saltiness. Do you know what those key ingredients are when you do it? Does anyone have a guess what, when you're using Thai cuisine? So what would sweetness be? Sugar, so we're using palm sugar. All right, so we're putting some palm sugar in there. And then the saltiness, anyone? Fish sauce. We've got some good cooks around here, so we're going to put some fish sauce as well. Now, what I love to use is kaffir lime leaves. Kaffir lime leaves are beautiful, and even Eva's um, at her house, she grows them, and they sometimes tend to fruit a little bit. So has anyone seen what a kaffir lime fruit actually looks like? So it's like a lime, but it's really bumpy on the outside, a little bit quite ugly fruit actually but it's still got the nice flavors of a lime so what I have done is I've shredded some of um, the kaffir lime in there and I'm just going to stir that a little bit and 
And now, the trick to this curry, because this is a Thai red duck curry, is actually quite spicy in general. Like it's, I would say it's a little bit more hotter than a mild curry. It's more on the hot side. So, and I don't actually take chili very well, surprisingly. But what I have done is I've actually um, decided to put some fresh fruits into this. So I've decided to use some lychee. So instead, you can get lychees from a can. They're about, I think about 400 mils. And what you end up doing is I kind of pour a little bit of that um, juice into there. And then I'll just pour it into there. And once this has cooked at the end, if you think it needs a little bit more sweetness, you can add a little bit more of the lychee juice into there. But it just depends on your palate. Sometimes people actually don't really like too sweet curries, but Thai, you can actually really take it there as well. Okay. All right. So what we've done is that. And I'm just going to check on the duck. Eva, how are you going? Okay. I made mean, such a mess on my table. My, my <laughs> if Manu was here, he'd be so, um, be like, like, get out of here. But when we were on the show, we were actually really good with our, um, with our prep, isn't it? It's, that's the thing with like, um, Asian ingredients, you know, there's like a thousand ingredients, but what you want to make sure, what makes Asian cooking really easy is if you have all your ingredients separated out and then you just start adding it and that's what makes it really easy. So, um, this is, this is not me. This is, yeah, this is really all good. Yeah. So what you got going on? So, um, at the moment, um, what I'm going to do is I've got my peanut sauce out on the stove. And this is actually sort of not the real color that a peanut sauce is meant to be. It ha has to be red, and that means that we should have used some uh, longer red chilies, and that would have given it the color that it needs. So what this has to do now, I've added some peanut sauce, some tamarind, and some lime juice. So it just has to uh, reduce for a good amount of time. And once you add the peanut sauce, um, the, sorry, the peanuts to the sauce, it actually will start to thicken like it has so. And peanut sauce is actually quite thick. Uh, a little bit watery, but not too thin. Um, so yeah, it just has to sit and reduce. So now I can actually start working on my marinade. Um, so what I'm going to do is, in my blender, put in some more red chilies. So it's about like 10 that we're using. And when you marinate, so today we're doing um, chicken and beef. And the chicken cut that I'm using is actually chicken thigh. Uh, it's quite a forgiving cut as well because it's got a bit of fat in there and that's what you want. Um, we're also using uh, Harvey Beef's beef. Uh, we're using the cut of the sirloin. Um, I don't know if many of you know, but Harvey Beef has actually been around for a really long time, since uh, 1919, the sixth generation farmers. And um, yeah, it's just a great product. I was going to blitz that. So frazzled. All right, so we're going to put some onions in there. Because it's quite a small blender, I'm not going to put that much. I'm just going to put two. Um, then you've got some candle nuts. And then we've got some turmeric, some coriander, some cumin, and some brown sugar. And some stinky shrimp paste. Does any of you know what that is? No? So uh, it's also called blachan, that's a, like a Malay word, but it's, it's shrimp paste. It stinks like hell, but it's absolutely essential uh, for the dish. You can't really skip it. So I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm just going to blitz it uh, along with some coconut milk. And then I'm going to actually use that to marinate the chicken. And ideally, actually, uh, you really want to be doing this the next day the day before you're actually going to cook it because it needs to soak up in the flavor. If you just marinate it and then cook it straight away, it's not going to taste the same. It ha actually has to, to sit in there for you know, a good six hours at least. So while I do that, do you need to? to no, no, I can help you out you with it. Help me <laughs> out? All right. Let's blitz it all together. So you're putting some coconut milk in there as yeah, well? Yeah, so I'm putting some coconut milk in here and you can blitz that. Yeah. There. No, that one. And then flick it that way. Okay, let's blitz this up. <laughs> so what are you going to be putting now? You're going to put the chicken so and also the Harvey beef into there? Yeah, so I've put the chicken thigh in one bowl and then I'm not going to mix it up. And then I've got my... Um, uh, do you want to talk about how you cut the chicken thigh? There's a yeah. particular way you have to do it, So the you? way when you cook the chicken thighs is... So obviously you've got a little big piece. What you want to kind of do is cut them a little bit in like a triangle piece, 
Okay, it's it just easier for when you're actually skewing. So it kind of gets a, like the nice shape because sometimes when you cut them into two small little chunks of squares, you're not getting the full flavor of the actual, um, like it's just a little bit too, sh you're short of the, how would you say, the chicken? So you kind of want to do it in like weird kind of triangles pieces. And do you want to talk about the bamboo skewers as well? Oh yes. So now the bamboo skewers, the trick is, who has ever actually tried to do kebabs and put them on the barbecue and then the actual um, bamboo um, kind of stick burns? Yes, I'm nodding at home. Yeah, that's it. So what you actually need to do, you actually need to soak them in water first at home and for probably about like a couple of hours as much as possible. So the water actually prevents it from burning a lot on the ends of the tips. So that's what we're going to do. So this is good. Good colour. Good colour. Eva's yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something's going so. Too. That's the colour it should be. It's a nice, thick, uh, thick spice paste that we want. All right. So let's put half and half. So we put half in there, half in here. And, and we're we going to get a, a little stir. bit of dirty here. That's it. So we're going to actually mix this. And the marinade here, like Eva said, you will normally want to do it the night before. Because that's when, you know, every time when you marinate things, it gives it time to really soak in all the flavours and everything. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to skew it. Actually, we'd probably do the beef is a bit easier. So Eva can do, do you want to do the beef and okay. I'll do the chicken? Yep. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically just skew um, about four to five in one. And you know what? What I love about making your own satays, you can be very generous as much as possible. So <laughs> sometimes, you know, when you go to the restaurants, you get that little small stick. These how you want them nice and big and generous. So that's why, can you see how, when I said a triangle piece, it's kind of still got a little bit more f um, meat on the each, each side. And you also kind of want it flat so that it's easier to actually pan fry and get an even heat. Yeah. So that's one. So I'm going to add that onto the hot plate. So also, um, traditionally, you would you would actually cook this over a charcoal flame because that's what makes satay really tasty is the charcoal uh, flavor. So Weber, old school, charcoal, barbecue, that would be the uh, set, uh, ideal way to do it. If you don't have that, then you just use your normal you know, barbecue, that's fine. And if you don't have that, you just use a grill plate. So now the little tip what I've always learned, and I don't know who's been to Singapore or Malaysia before, yeah? And have you seen like when you go out on the streets, how the satay guy is always spending a lot of time and love basting that satay? He's basting it with a lot of oil. So what you normally do is you have your little basting stick and you're putting a little oil and you want to baste each side of the um, satay like that and give it every say about five to six minutes rotate it and then baste it again with the oil. So this, it may seem like a little bit of a tedious process, but it'll take about, I say about a good 20 to 30 minutes basting each side. And don't worry if it's a little bit burnt on the outside, it's because it's kind of like that nice char you want to get on the outside, nice crispy char on the outside and juicy in the middle. So that's what you want to do, okay? So the next thing what I'm actually going to do is, so I've actually started, um, kind of like cooking the curry, is at the end, I'm actually now going to add the light cheese. So the light cheese, you don't want to actually put it too far into the cook. You want to do it at the end, the last probably, the last say two to three minutes, is because if you cook the light cheese too much, it kind of, you don't get that freshness, because what you want to do is still have that flavor, but then still have that freshness of that nice, um, juicy lychee at the end to offset the heat, okay? I gotta say, like, of all the things that Deb cooks, this is probably my favorite dish. <laughs> it's she, very, Eva's very hard to approve, that's what I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> She's very hard to please. So, But that I'm is a damn good dish. <laughs> and it's easy to make too, which is what I like the best. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start plating up. So we're gonna put the curry in here. And this curry, what you just need to make some like a steam bowl of um, rice or something at home. And you just want to serve it like this. And you're going to get your duck. Whoops. Okay. 
And you're going to slice it across. Like that. So can you see it's like a little bit nice and pink? That's what you want. So the key to a really good duck breast is you want to let it rest. Okay? You don't want to let it um, kind of, how would you say, like, the thing is you want to cook it and you want to rest it like any meat. You don't want it to, like, when you cook, don't let it rest, it kind of bleeds all the juices and you don't want that. Okay? All right, so Eva, how's the satay and the sauce going? So, <laughs> fast forward. <laughs> Um, this is As like any prepared. cooking show oh, yeah. you do. <laughs> um, so essentially, this is what it looks like. Um, and you would serve it with, you know, your cucumbers and your red onion and your, and your peanut sauce. Um, also, traditionally, you would serve it with some uh, sticky rice in a wrapped up in a banana leaf. Um, but this is essentially what uh, satay would look like. Cool. And Deb, how would yours look like? So this, I'm just finishing it off. I'm just going to put some, like, fried shallots. So you can actually make these fried shallots at home as well. You just, just the shallots that we've done in the actual curry. And you just want to really, really fry it really, really well. And then you just dry it at the end as well. Or if you don't have the time, you can just get it from the um, local Chinese store. So that is pretty much the little duck curry all in one go. Okay? So this is, and like I said, with this the duck curry that we've done, if you're game enough, if you want to, you cut your duck into a few pieces, obviously the, the leg, the breast, and you submerge it with the bone in here. Cover it for about an hour and a half to two hours, and it will be like spot on, falls off the bone as well. Be warned that because duck is quite a fatty meat, there will be a, lo a, a little bit more oil than usual. As you can see when I was cooking it in the pan, see all that duck fat that's come through? So don't be scared to see, oh, what's happened? That curry's gone wrong. It's not because that. It's because the duck is nice and um, fatty, I would say. But yeah. So do you guys all have any questions or anything? We've got some giveaways. No? Any tips you've always wanted to ask? One. Yes. Oh, just hang on. Sorry. Deb's going to come around with the I'll microphone. I'll come find you. You can be on the microphone. Um, you might have said it, but I didn't hear. In the beginning, you put the duck in a cold pan. Why? Yeah. So I put the duck in the cold pan first, just purely because you don't want to burn the skin. So if you're putting it on a hot pan and it goes, tss, it will start burning really fast. So if you start it on a cold pan, it slowly will render the skin's fat. And like that will take about 10, 15 minutes just to get, like, the, you don't want. Fatty fat, you want like crispy fat. I don't know how to explain it that well, but that's what, that's a little tip actually Manu and Pete taught me actually on the show. Because Eva and I used to just put it on a hot pan. We thought, yep, it'll sizzle fast, but no, start on a cold pan. And no oil. You don't need any oil on it. Because yeah. of the duck's fat, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. So why do you use a coconut milk and coconut cream at the same time? We, I use coconut milk and coconut cream because coconut cream is a little bit thicker. It's just a little bit more body to the um, curry. I mean, if you don't have coconut cream, you can still use coconut milk. But just it's like saying, oh, why do you put milk and cream in an ice cream? It's just to give a little bit more body to the, to the actual curry. But yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, duck. duck. You're not a big fan of duck? Yeah. Is there any other meat that I can use to substitute? I mean, this is a traditional Thai duck curry. You can try it with chicken if you wanted to. But I'm sure, I bet you, if someone yeah. cooked you a really good duck, you would change your mind, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. I never used to like duck yeah. until I had Deb's duck curry. Do you know what? A big example, Eva hates pork in general. Until we got on the show of My Kitchen Rules, the first dish that we got was pork, crispy pork belly. And she was like... Ooh. And I was like, Eva, you got to eat it. You can't just make us well, look like... because I didn't want to be all like precious. Oh, I don't eat this. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is fine. You know, and I forced her it. to eat it and she loves it. it. Yeah. So from then on, I bet you probably, if someone can cook you a really nice duck, you probably change Get Deb to cook you a duck, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, yes. Okay, one question. Yes. So you have a website where you've got this on as well? Yeah. Excellent. And does it come with that... You said like a banana leaf with the rice as well, the sticky rice? No, so we don't have the recipe for the sticky rice, but I'm sure you can actually just Google, Google, Google it. Google will tell you. Google will be your yeah, best friend. Yeah, but don't worry. We won't disappoint with our recipes yeah. anyway. So probably next summer with your friends, get the barbecue cranking, get that on. Excellent. 
It will be a, peep, a crowd pleaser. Thank you. Any other Any questions? questions? No? Well, I um, just want to say uh, Clean Heat are an amazing WA uh, born and bred company. And if you're not on Clean Heat, you're most definitely paying too much for your gas. And if you don't believe us, just ask the Clean Heat guys at our stands. Uh, they've got a comparison uh, chart between Brand X and Brand Clean. Awesome, which is Clean <laughs> Heat. Um, and yeah, and if you sign up today, they've got freebies. And you can also go into the draw to win a year's worth of gas. So, you know, you're in a win-win situation. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for all for coming and taking your time to listen. And hopefully, we will see all these creations um, made at home. So, thank you very much for coming. Thank, thank you. you.